So if you want to learn JavaScript in a fun and social environment, this video is for you. So in today's video, I'm partnering up with Lighthouse Labs, which is a coding bootcamp uh, here in Vancouver, but also uh, at other locations across Canada. Uh, I want to show you the 21 day coding challenge which is an easy and playful way of uh, learning JavaScript. Um, so maybe you have some experience in other programming languages already, um, but also if you have no programming experience, um, this is a really easy way of getting into coding. So you go through one challenge every day. Um, they start off fairly easy and they become a little bit more challenging um, towards the end. And the coolest part of all of this, at the end, you can win a trip to San Francisco and a tour through the Silicon Valley. And now I want to take a look at day five of the coding challenge, which is actually today. And um, I'm going to run you through the whole problem and discuss a solution approach. But before you go any further, pause this video and give it a spin yourself. Try to think of a solution and then come back here. This is the 21 day coding challenge dashboard. I've already registered, um, I'm signed in, and this is where you will land. So you have this grid here, and each grid, each of those green um, rectangles represents one challenge. So as you can see, I've already solved a good number of those coding challenges. And today we are going to look at day five. Okay, challenge five. Uh, you see some code here already. This is uh, code from challenges one to four. But let's look at the problem statement first. Um, our grid is written and defined um, in coordinates. So they're uh, stating two examples here, A3 and D8. So similar to, let's say, a chessboard. Um, you're asked to build a function which is called convert column, um, which you can give an argument, and that argument is a coordinate like a3 or d8. And your function should return the number of the column. So we're only interested in the column here. Now, taking this example here, c4, um, the column is represented by the letter, so by the C. Um, our convert column function should return two. Why two? Um, why not three, right? Because C is the third letter. Um, it's easy. Um, we are zero indexed. So as it's saying here, JavaScript arrays start at zero. Um, and we're interested in the number of the column. So the number of the column C because we're zero indexed, we count from zero to one to two, um, we should return with two, right? Right now, we're not interested in the row identifier. So the row identifier in this case would be four. Uh, we're not interested in that at all. So let's see, um, we have some code here and throughout all of those challenges, we will be using um, previous code snippets we've built. So we have a count rows that's from challenge one and from challenge two. Um, we have um, a function which returns the grid size. So two by two, four by three, whatever. And we have a function which counts all the cells. So today we are interested in um, a function called convert column. And make sure that the names you're using here, the function names, um, are the exact names uh, from the problem statement. Um, because you'll need this exact match for the um, algorithm to check and test your code. Um, now, we need to give it an argument. So we need to be able to take one argument and we're just going to call that argument coordinate. To solve this challenge, uh, we need to think of our algorithm first before we jump into uh, any more code. Um, we need to convert 
a letter, which in this case, uh, sticking the, with the example C4, we need to convert this letter C to the number 2. Um, for this, we need to know that actually every character, so in this case the C, um, is represented by an integer, um, a so-called code point or code unit. And um, the format uh, which JavaScript is using here is called UTF-16. Um, so that means C is represented, so uppercase C, I should say, so every, uh, every um, character, uppercase C is represented by an integer between uh, zero and some big number, okay? So if we would know this number, uh, which represents the C, um, we can transform, convert this number uh, to, let's say, two. So something we also need to know is um, uppercase C has a certain number as its representation. Uppercase D will be this number plus one. So it is actually um, increasing um, as the alphabet increases from C to D, from D to E. Um, of course, this is a, a kind of a function or some or a functionality in JavaScript that you're not supposed to just know, right? Um, this is where we need to look at documentation. You would do a bit of uh, Google research and you would maybe read some Stack Overflow replies, whatever. You could also ask colleagues about this problem. At some point, you need exact documentation on the functions and the methods and the built-in functions that you will use uh, with JavaScript. So what many developers like to do is they go to the Mozilla uh, web docs. And this is what you see here. This is a very extensive and uh, you know very well-maintained documentation uh, of the specifications of, of JavaScript. Um, and Looking at this page here, this is the function uh, which is built into JavaScript strings, which we're going to use uh, to solve this problem. It's called char code add, so character code add. So what we need to know is that every character is represented by an integer. Uh, so every character which is part of UTF-16 um, is represented by an integer from 0 to 65,535. Okay, so MDN Web Docs gives you a beautiful little um, console here where not only do they give you an example, they, they also let you play with this console and, and see what happens if you change this code here. So reading this, we have a sentence, um, which is a string, and we have an index, which is 4 and um, they do some logging and they expect the output. Right, so uh, what are happening? What, what's happening here? There's a sentence um, which is used in here and we apply this char code add function and we give it an index. So the index for will just say which character to pick out of this sentence. So index for would be zero, one, two, three is the space, and four would be the queue, okay? So we are figuring out which integer represents lowercase q. This is happening, line five, sentence dot char code at index. And then they um, have another function call here, which is taking the sentence again, um, and just using the character add function. So character add gives you the character at the specified index. So the string itself, uh, or I should say the character itself out of the string. So um, the expected output would be, I just click here, run. Um, the expected output is exactly what they're saying also here. Um, 113 is equal to Q. Okay, so they picked Q, fine. 
uh, we knew about that because it's index four. And now we know that lowercase q is represented by the integer 113. And now um, we're getting closer to what we want here. Um, what would be, what are we really interested in? So we know that our grid is defined um, by uppercase characters from A to Z, right? So we could essentially hijack this example here and see what happens if I put an A in here. So now index four is uh, an uppercase A and I want to know which integer represents uppercase A. Let's run this. Okay, 65. Now, what about B? Next one. 66. Okay, so this follows a pattern, right? Um, A, B, C, now this is 67. Okay, this is exactly what we need for our um, day five coding challenge. Because we know that uppercase A is represented by the integer 65, we can uh, solve this problem to transform um, a given character, which are all uppercase A to Z, and transform it into an index. Okay, we know that character um, uppercase A is 65. We want to transform um, A. So let's note it down here. A um, should result in oops, zero, right? So if we would pass in convert column, um, let's say A4, right? What should be our result? So we can do a bit of a pseudo code here. So let's say calling our function convert column with um, A4. What should be our result? Um, we're only interested in the A. It should actually be zero, right? So let's take this exact same result here. Um, um, what should be the result for, let's say, D9? So if A is 0, B is 1, C is 2, D is 3, right? So uh, we can solve this problem in a single line. Uh, we know that uh, A is represented uh, by UTF-16, 65. Okay, so going here, um, we can say we're going to return um, coordinate, which is our input, and we're going to apply this character code at. And we are interested in what? We're interested in an index, right? So in here, we, we want to have an index. This index is always just the first character, right? Um, it's the A or the D or whatever is in here. So this time this is zero. If I would leave it at this, we would return 65 if we're given A4. Or for D9, we would be returning uh, 69. That's not what we want, right? We want to return zero or three. That's just one thing we have to add. We need to subtract 65, right? We need to um, move um, this range from 65 and upwards down to zero, one, two, three, four. And that's it. Um, now, 
we have everything we need. Um, we know that we can read the character we're interested in with char codet. It will give us uh, 65, 66, 67 and upwards. Um, and we will just subtract 65. And that will give us exactly what we need. It will give us 0 for A, and it will give us uh, 3 for D, and so on. All right, this was day 5 of the coding challenge. And you can still sign up for it through the link in the description. You're going to learn some new tricks every day. It's going to be a nice experience after those 21 days. Um, sign up with the group. It's going to be a lot more fun, you know, talking through those problems with your colleagues. And um, that's it. My name is Ramon Lopez. This is Success in Tech.